of, I think it's not Democratic or Republican per se. I think it is easy to get pulled into that discussion or liberal or conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, Republicans need health care too, right? They need jobs. So let's put aside that kind of false premise that it is that, that is the clear dividing line, okay? Mm -hmm. That's the game of politics. When it comes to real people and real families, what we need to do is to have compassionate, clear, consistent leadership. Tim hasn't shown that. I think that Tim is, um, as I said, I think what he's doing is he's saying, I need to keep my seat and this is what I need to do. And my point is this, you know, all votes are not created equal. This is a very important vote. In other words, this is not just a mere rubber stamp. He needs to show that he has a conscience and that he is committed to leadership. Tim Holden has been in office for 18 years, 18 years. This should be easy for him. We're learning something about him. And it's not only health care, but it's also the Helping Save Families Homes Act, which I think is very important as well, because the two are connected. You know, there, you know there's, there are some basic um, uh, characteristics of life that we need. Everybody needs to eat, okay? We need food, clothing, and shelter. Food, clothing, and shelter. I would also suggest that in this day and age, it's important to have access to decent and affordable health care. Okay? Tim has taken away at least two of those opportunities, decent and affordable health care insurance. Okay? And what about a shelter? What about shelter? How do you do that? And I'm going to tell you something else. We have to move away from legislation via earmarks. I didn't talk about that because it's about, that was not about the moment to talk about it, but I will talk about it now. What we need to do is to figure out how we move away from that into a more consistent way of making policy and then implementing it. That's what true leadership requires. It requires that we have leaders who take a stand. That's what I think. Good. I have a question for you, yes. Sheila. Uh, while you were speaking, there was a, a group of school children yes. up, uh, looking down from the balcony up here. What do you say to those children about their future, especially with jobs and education? Wow. What do I say to them about their future? Well, I will say this. I think it is that, that education has always been critical, most critical. Um, we have all learned, all of us here, I know, have learned that education is the pathway to success. Now, what we need to do is, and I would emphasize this strongly, is really recommit ourselves to real education reform. We have really, we have some challenges facing us right now in America, and I would tell them to really take their ownership of their own lives when it comes to education. You know, I have to tell you a brief story. When I was in ninth grade, I was at a school and I didn't like the school when I was transferring to ninth grade, and I transferred myself to a better school. I literally went in and I transferred myself. So when I say take ownership, I mean really take ownership. Find out where you need to go, because I knew that if I didn't do that, my parents didn't understand that I was thinking that I needed to save myself. So I would say take ownership, really find a way to build capacity, and I would also say that to teachers. Teachers are the servant leaders of our time. We need teachers. I'm sitting here and I'm watching a gentleman who actually spends a lot of time, he writes books, and he educates children around the importance of reading. And so that is the most important thing we can do is to stress the importance of education, but also to tell parents that they need to work with their children and they need to be empowered and impassioned about the need to really, really, really commit themselves to this. Without an education, we're actually creating we're actually creating a couple of classes, two classes, and we are becoming more and more stratified. Yes. I know folks who, you know, who straddle, but not many, those two those two classes of citizenship. We have the elite and then we have everybody else. And the answer is that there was a time in America when you could go to an ordinary school, come out with a decent education and make something of yourself find a decent job, work in a mill. The mills are closing. What are they going to do? We have, we have technology um, jobs that are available and we need to really focus more on the technological sector of our economy. We have to build it up. I have a friend here who is an IT expert. He knows that we need to build that up. And we also need to look, of course, at the trade imbalance. We really need to focus on that. We need to look at the impact of NAFTA what that has meant in terms of the economy and in terms of the manufacturing sector. We need to take a closer look at that. 
You know, there's a lot of debate about whether if that if we can we can retrofit uh, many of the jobs that have been lost and find new ways of creating you know new opportunities. The answer is it's tied to actually retooling those who have lost jobs, but also creating opportunities for the young people there. That's a very long answer. You can cut that down to size if you like. It's all connected, as my son once said when he was six years old, and it is all connected. <laughs> Any other questions? I'll be happy. I'm, I'm on a roll now. I'm just getting started. Come on. Come okay. on with it. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Hello.